What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another Detroit Lions Breakdown video. And today, we are changing it up a little bit. And we're going to be talking about a player that was CFL's most outstanding player in 2023. So let's get this started. Welcome, everybody, to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with another breakdown video for the Detroit Lions. And today, we are going to be mixing it up a little bit. So I understand it's draft season. We are going to get through all these draft picks. We just did our video on Christian Mahogany. So feel free to go check that. That one out. I think that was a lot of fun. But today we're shaking it up a little bit. Hopefully in a shorter video format. That's really the goal because that Christian video is like 40 minutes and I don't want to make this video necessarily 40 minutes. I think it's fine with the draft picks. I don't want to make this 40 minutes. But this is a player that I have really not dove into whatsoever until now. And I'm very excited to do this. So today I had a show on Bleach Report. Definitely can go check it out. It's on the page under the events tab under my name or you can go to the Lions page and you'll find that over there as well on Bleach Report. And we went through and we talked about players that were kind of the under-the-radar newbies, like the new additions to the Lions that maybe haven't been getting much buzz or attention, but they probably should. Now, this was a player that I put on that list. Even though I've heard you guys bring him up, it's been brought up in other shows that I've been on, I've heard a lot of people bring this player's name up. So it's not like I've never heard anybody discuss Matthew Betts, but I had to put him on the list because I had not dove into the player yet. So for that video, I was like, hey, let me break down Matthew Betts. Like, it's time to do this, as well as some other players that I haven't talked about either. So definitely go check out that episode. We may dive into those guys separately as well at some point but I don't know so definitely go check that out and this feels like the per perfect time to do so the draft is over the Lions didn't technically draft an edge rusher though they do have some UDFA edge rusher signings that I do think have some real upside plus as I've said you know really going back to last season I thought look Josh Pascal would be a big part of the future I'm really buying into Marcus Davenport I think he'll get extended after the season I like what the Lions have at edge and I think we're all overlooking what the Lions really have there and where the snaps are legitimately going to go because the majority of the time we're only playing a four-man front right you're not getting five guys on the line consistently, and Josh Pascal is going to be a huge part of this team for the future. So it wasn't like a necessarily, oh my goodness, they didn't draft an edge rusher. One guy that we signed that statistically broke out this past season because he's had an interesting path. He's 29 years old. So when I dove into this, I wasn't sure what I was expecting, but I didn't expect a player to be 29 years old. But it does make sense. He's had an interesting path. Most recently in the CFL, most outstanding player this past season, 18 sacks. He had a block punt, which we're going to show, which was awesome, and then also three forced fumbles. This guy was awesome this past season. He was setting records, signed back with the Detroit Lions in February. Now, what's so interesting about this is that reportedly he had offers from other teams, but he decided to go with the Detroit Lions because, well, one, he thought there was some chemistry there between him and the Lions, the coaching staff, but also the opportunity that he would have to crack the roster. Like, he feels like there's a real opportunity here to crack the roster. And back at that time, of course, before the draft, things like that, where the Lions roster was at, it would make a ton of sense. The Lions were losing Julian Okwara, Charles Harris, Romeo Okwara. Like, there was a real there's a real opportunity here, and especially now that you didn't go out and necessarily draft an edge rusher, that kind of feels like he has to make the team. There is a real opportunity. Now, we're going to talk more about the player specifically here in a second, but I do think he's best suited to compete in that role of, hey, this is what James Houston adds to the table. This is what Derek Barnes adds to the table. He's best suited for that role because I think early downs, He's shown the capability to play on the line of scrimmage as that Sam linebacker like Derek Barnes did. I think he's shown ability to that. He's shown football intelligence, and he's shown the coverage ability, what I've seen, to be able to handle that role on early downs. But then also, there's just the aspect of, as every team always says, you can't have enough pass rushers. And there's always a role for a guy that can get after the quarterback. There's always an opportunity to compete in a role like that. So he felt like there was an opportunity here, which makes a ton of sense to me that he would feel that way. It's reported that he took the Detroit Lions deal instead of taking potentially guaranteed money elsewhere to sign here. So we have to dive into this player because, like I said, statistically broke out this past season. He was actually for a second in the NFL. He was with the Chicago Bears coming out in the 2019 NFL draft. He was ultimately drafted as well in the CFL as a third overall pick in 2019, but he was signed by the Bears as an undrafted free agent, but he didn't make it out of the final roster cut, so we saw him play in 2019 in the CFL. The 2020 season got canceled. 2021 didn't really do a ton statistically, so he was let go. His contract expired, and then 2022 signed with the British Columbia Lions. Lions, and he had a really strong season in 2022. And then, of course, this past year, he absolutely broke out. In that midst, he also worked out with teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars throughout that time period. So, reportedly, there was definitely some interest out there from multiple other teams at this time. It would make sense. If there was interest in him then for him to do what he did this past season, there definitely should be interest. Because even though he's on the older side, and you're not necessarily viewing this as like your typical rookie, if you are just saying, hey, what guy could give us an impact? Like, what free agent is out there that could be on a cheaper deal that could potentially flash? And he could be like, yo, this guy could actually get out 
after the quarterback a little bit, this guy would make a ton of sense to kind of fit into that category. So that's who we're going to dive in today, Matthew Betts. And I'm going to talk about what I've seen so far from diving into this player and watching some games on this player. And we will show clips. So let's do a quick little background here. Matthew Betts, 29 years old, of course, coming from the CFL, weighing in at 254 at six foot two and a half. When you look at the way that he tested in, and again, I said this in the Bleacher Report side, this is not Aiden Hutchinson, okay? Trust me, he's not Aiden Hutchinson. But there are a lot of similar testing numbers to just the way that he scored. The 47240, the 23 bench press press, which is a few less than Aiden Hutchinson. The biggest difference was the vertical 29 and a half inches versus Hutchinson, who had like 36 inches. The explosiveness also does show different in games, like whether that's the bull rushing power that Aiden Hutchinson shows. You don't see that with Matthew Betts necessarily. That does show up. But an incredible three cone dr- three cone drill showing off the foot quickness and the foot agility at a 679 which at the time when Hutchinson posted his 6.73 coming out of the draft, I mean, it was like gaps between everybody else at the edge rusher position. It was like incredible. And if you remember, Hutchinson was extremely agile coming out for the draft and also not having freakishly long arms, 32 and 3 fourth inches, which again, Hutchinson, 32 and 1 eighth inches. So there's similarities there in just terms of body type. Plus, I think when you watch him as a mover in the lower body, like when you watch him running in space or you watch him kind of moving off the backside, he does to me draw similarities in just movements, the way that he moves to an Aiden Hutchinson. You can kind of feel the lower body type like that. But again, he's not Aiden Hutchinson. That that should go without saying, but I might as well just say it because some people will think I'm saying that he's Aiden Hutchinson. He's not Aiden Hutchinson, okay? You know, the CFL has a lot of different rules than the NFL, whether that's, you know, one less down, for example, or a wider field, or 12 players on each side of the field. Like, there's major differences, but, and I can throw off the offensive line too, but another big difference, and this starts off with the first category that we have to dive into, which is first step explosion, one of the critical factors here. First thing that you have to dive into is the fact that in the CFL, the neutral zone is a yard long. Defensive linemen line up at least one yard behind the ball. So there's much more space that you have to kind of eat up. It's really a whole first step that you have to eat up of ground in the CFL versus what you actually have to cover in the NFL. So that's a massive difference. Plus, then you also can have the advantage of the CFL where there could be anticipation where when you see the receivers racing up to the line of scrimmage before the snap, you can kind of anticipate the snap count. That could help a little bit. I thought at times it helped bets a little bit as well, but that is a massive Massive difference is the more ground that you typically have to cover in the CFL versus the NFL when you talk about kind of that first step explosion that you carry. But this is the area that took me back. This was the area that I was like, whoa, I didn't expect to see this out of Matthew Betts. But it also is very understandable why there was interest in this player and also why he has the stat line that he does. Because what stood out to me is there is a lot of instances, and we'll talk about it, where he did not finish on the quarterback. Like he did not make a play on the quarterback. He might got gotten to the backfield, been a disruptor, but he was not in a position to actually finish the sack. There was tons of occasions of that so I gotta believe this guy's pressure rates were insane but yet for him to have 18 sacks is even more insane because of the amount of times that he was in the backfield and he wasn't making a play on the quarterback and to know that he has 18 sacks tells you like yo this guy was back here all day he was living in the backfield which makes sense and to me that started off with the first step specifically with the first step quickness that he plays that now he did show some reactiveness and again some anticipation as I talked about you'd see at times him trying to kind of anticipate almost like the receivers sometimes I think you kind of kind of play off of that a little bit you'd see some of that anticipation I thought that he was great in this category he carries build up speed around the edge beyond just the first step where, you know, the big issue that it has occasionally, I thought there would be like a little bit of a false step or a hitch or you get off the ball a little bit weird. Sometimes that was coming back to kind of the anticipation, small little step in there that wasn't necessary to getting upfield. And then that second stride would be much more effective than the first one was. I also didn't think he carried a ton of explosion off of that first step. There was definitely real burst and quickness off the line, but not as much explosiveness off that first step, which I don't think sometimes even gets shown up as much because you get into a contact seemingly a little bit later. And what's interesting about this, I felt like that usually came from more of a two-point stance than usually the three-point stance, which you could really just see him launch off the ball. It's that build-up speed around the edge. He very quickly gets into a sprint, which makes him dangerous. And we'll talk about this more, but his ability to also maintain speed around the edge while using his hands and combating an offensive line, but being able to continue to maintain speed and really race the, race the corner, that is a problem for offensive linemen. He has enough first-step quickness where even in the CFL, if you got out late as an offensive lineman, even though you have a little extra space, he was going to make you pay for that. You got out late as an offensive lineman, this guy was going to beat you to the backfield. I'll slow it down so you can see the anticipation. Look how he starts to move before the ball is snapped. You see how he started to kind of roll off the line of scrimmage before the ball is even snapped, and then he maintains that burst. Occasionally, we'll see that in college football. Rarely, you'll see it in the NFL, where an offensive tackle just gets off late 
from the snap and then he's beat. This guy made offensive linemen constantly pay for getting off the line late. Smooth getting upfield, and he also carries a great lateral burst as well, which of course can open up some stunt work as well, TE stunts, things like that. Also carries incredible shiftiness, and this is a problem. This comes back to his foot quickness. This can show up really as a pass rusher at the top of the rush. There's just a lot of shiftiness within his game as a pass rusher, but as I also said, opens up a lot of flexibility from spots that he can rush from. When they put him in the interior, sometimes I didn't feel like that explosion necessarily always showed off the line of scrimmage, and again, that first step wasn't always as impactful, but I think it's definitely different being in the interior when you have to give that much space versus the NFL. But they can move him around. He could be effective covering ground quickly and being able to maintain covering that ground as he worked upfield, but then launching off the line low, smooth, and being able to build up strides as you work the edge of the pocket. The first step is what really stuck out to me. And like I said, for the most part, he does avoid false steps. Like you would have some rare little things that would pop up there where you just occasionally laid off the line, but nothing that would be a concern of mine. I thought he rarely had false steps. So I thought he was great at getting off the line. You had slanting burst, you had anticipation, you had a downhill pad level which was strong and then also good strides and he could a lot of times get that within the first stride that he took but even in the second stride he could kind of build that momentum so this is a guy that really could get off the line and you see it as a run defender but also as a pass rusher but you would see it as a run defender his ability to just kind of fly into offensive tackles being able to play as a stand up edge rusher right getting in a wide alignment or playing a little bit off the ball his ability to just launch into offensive tackles with giving a lot of depth was one thing that did stand out so for me that was the biggest thing it was first step explosiveness first step quickness I thought he was great in that category. Now, as a pass rusher, to me, he was good here. He was above average as a pass rusher. And again, I do this on projection more so than just like, oh, did he dominate his competition? One guy that he actually reminded me of to kind of give you an idea was Jonah Ellis. Okay, I wrote that down. If you guys, anybody watched Jonah Ellis coming out for this year's draft, just in terms of kind of play style, body type, the way that he wins versus the way that he doesn't really win. I didn't really see the spin move from this player like you did from Jonah Ellis, but just the kind of the movements. He gave me some vibes to a guy like Jonah Ellis rushing the edge. And I was, you know, I was I was okay on Jonah Ellis. I didn't love Jonah Ellis necessarily. I think second round was too high. But I did like Jonah Ellis to play that potential sandbacker role. So I guess it makes a ton of sense that I would feel like this guy fits similarly to that. The big issue that I had, and we'll talk about this, came back to the flexion for me as a pass rusher. To me, he was below average in this aspect. And it really came back to the fact of the knee bend. Like, he didn't have a great ability to really sink himself down. Showed up in a lot of aspects. Shake at the top of the rush. You know, try to create hesitation. Stop, start. It lacked suddenness. It was a little bit kind of like rolling through. It was a little bit choppy. And then also at the same time, just the ability to convert speed to power felt like it was really lacking. They sink, drive, plant, and get through an offensive tackle. That felt like it was lacking. The lack of knee bend I thought was a real issue. Now, he carried bend in other ways, but that I thought was a legitimate issue, and it really kind of held him back as a pass rusher. What you do like is, again, the foot quickness, and this could open up uh, pass rush counter moves. He also showed some ankle flexion, which you would see in some of like the T-steps that he would be able to create off the line, kind of like a cornerback right when they're in that off man coverage and whether it's like okay do you want to pedal or do you want to create the t-step like open your feet like a t so you can plan and drive on it he shows deflection to do that as a pass rusher so you can get him in a lot of spots where again he can kind of minimize false steps but he can get a lot of spots like that where he can instantly create acceleration from a stop start position because he's able to kind of utilize that ankle flexion plant and then launch off it so he's able to really minimize some of those small movements real savviness as a pass rusher one of those things would be using that stop start speed around the edge that is kind of a nice little add that he has to some of his pacing. The big issue there to me is that sometimes, again, it feels choppy. It doesn't feel as sudden. You don't get like an actual stop. You kind of just get him kind of like slowing down and rolling through a little bit. And I think sometimes that's not as decisive as you would need it to be to actually open up the pass rush, especially when you consider that at the top of the rush. With contact, he struggles to sink down and collapse the pocket, really flatline the back of the pocket. He struggles with that. He doesn't carry the bend to do so. So for him, he's better playing through half man where he can kind of drive you back rather than planning and sticking and getting to the quarterback. There's a lot of instances where either one, he'll go to steep upfield, and then two, not having that flexibility to kind of sink himself down and get back to the quarterback. Because of some of that lack of speed to power, I thought at times he would not be able to take advantage of offensive tackles. If they sat, set too wide, they got out too wide, they opened their hips, that he wouldn't be able to take advantage of like, okay, let me just drive through this guy. He's a little bit off balance in the spot. And also some of the slither felt like it had some issues here as well. He wasn't as slippery as it felt like once he got in traffic. Now, with that being said, we'll talk about his hand usage because that opened up a lot of things for him. But I thought there was a little bit of lack of slither there as well. Maybe this comes back to Ben too, but I thought contact balance could get thrown off occasionally where he would kind of lose gas working through contact. Not like battling his hands. He's great in that aspect, but like if he got a good shot on him by an offensive lineman, you'd see it kind of lose gas and he get forced to reset, but he can create that instant acceleration. I also really like the awareness that he played with as a pass rusher, and this would come from, okay, offensive tackle set like this. All right, let me try to attack him like this, and he opened up a variety of ways to win. He wasn't just a one-trick pony that was like, I'm going to try to keep winning like this, and it just depends on how you play it, whether or not I'm going to win. 
Like, you didn't get that sense. Now, there were certain games he's definitely more dominant than others. You'd see the awareness, and it came back to even running back awareness, like feeling a running back out of the backfield trying to give support where he would immediately kind of shift up his pass for his approach be like, let me kind of slide around this guy. He had vision about his game, whether that was finding a ball carrier through the run, and I always love this about pass rushers, finding the quarterback in the pocket. He played with real vision, and that same vision applied to working through multiple blocks, having a plan to deal with a running back and an offensive tackle. It's an open up variety for him to win inside, outside, occasionally half man. It opened up a variety of ways to win, and then he also carries the hand usage to win in a variety of ways as well. And he carried that true foot quickness to just find ways to get an offensive tackle off balance. You could see it here, right? Offensive tackle starts to open, so he presses it back inside, then Joel's back outside, and he's so shifty. Offensive tackle follows off balance, and that just opens up so much upside as a pass rusher where you can find ways to finish off of this. Talk about the kind of play strength that he brings to the table and like the run support. This is the area where I had a little bit lower of a projection, though I do feel like, again, the more you have him working on tight ends, you may find more success than working on an offensive tackle. I just think offensive tackles in general gave him a problem because I thought he was just outmatched. I mean, first off, again, he wasn't sitting necessarily low. He plays pretty tall into block setting the edge. He doesn't really sink his weight down to create a really strong anchor. So there's that aspect. He's not necessarily bulky in the lower body. So there's that where he can be moved around. But I also, what I liked about him playing the edge is that he would position himself well. It almost kind of gave me some Darius Robinson vibes and the fact that he would position himself very quickly. He could very he could speed up his footwork to position himself properly for leverage and create good angles and create good entry points to get the offensive tackle off balance or whoever that was. And that's where I thought he could thrive being able to set an edge. But it was less about kind of the strength that he played with at the point of attack. So I think the more tight ends that you let him work against, it's probably going to be more successful than him having to handle a tackle at the point of attack. He'll stand up at the point of attack. He doesn't necessarily dig into setting the edge, but I like his quick positioning to set the edge, and he works on top of it with control and leveraged footwork into contact, where that's kind of splitting his feet into like a sprinter stance to be able to sit himself down. Like, he does well with this footwork where, for the most part, he's not just kind of standing straight up, putting his arms out. He'll settle his feet in a spot where, again, he can typically get off the block. It's just bigger offensive linemen are probably going to move him around a little bit lot a little bit, but I think that he was better the wider that he aligned, and also because it could give him a little bit of a runway to kind of jolt himself into contact. He doesn't play with like heavy hands. I didn't feel like, especially in terms of handling run blocks for that initial point of attack, when he doesn't have much of a runway to kind of jolt offensive linemen. If anything, sometimes it felt the other way around, where guys would kind of push him up, push him back, and like, oh, that's not good. I didn't feel that kind of force, but where you could create energy and momentum is when he had a little bit more space and he was able to kind of get downhill on offensive linemen or tight ends, and then he could kind of create some pop backwards. And usually he plays with the football awareness and kind of that quickness to feel it and be like, okay, let me get here. Like he had the sense of, oh, there's a tight end down blocking. Let me step over to that. Like he had a sense and a feel awareness about him of where blocks were coming from. I think at times, you know, I would like to see him speed up the process a little bit. Like, okay, they're trying to get wide here. Let me get wide. But for the most part, it was a pretty good feel of like where the blocker's at. Let me not get pinned down on the play. Let me get out. He did show play strength when being in crowds. And you'd see that in the interior, his legs would drive through contact, kind of working towards the quarterback. There was kind of that relentlessness in the lower body, but I also think again, they kind of come back to hand usage as well. What he does bring in terms of strength to me is that he really does carry core strength within his game, which I think is very effective and again, he's able to carry some of that torque then, positioning, quick set positioning, the hand usage. And here, again, I thought he was a plus in this category. I think it could definitely improve. There were real instances where it felt like he was kind of getting trapped between offense linemen. He didn't really have a plan necessarily. But what I think he does well is that usually when he has a decisive pass rush plan, it syncs well with his footwork and he's able to kind of time things together and he's able to make the most out of his hand usage whether that's at the top of the rush okay I'm going to plant and I'm going to punch here on an offensive tackle and he's able to create separation half man let me create separation as I'm working through even though you felt lack of flexion even in the hips sorry at best it felt average but even when he felt that it felt like he created more space when he was able to tie his hands together with his footwork and kind of slide by an offensive lineman he put those things on a string as a pass rusher and also as a run defender as well he also played with quick hands at the top of the pass rush and to transition and lock out offensive Lyman. You get that you get flashes of him utilizing his inside arm to keep working the edge. We'll see good edge rushers do that where they can have a long arm, that inside arm, get keep their right arm free, keep himself clean, and then continue to work with that opposite hand around the edge. Like he gave you all those kind of flashes where he did a really nice job of really fighting to keep himself clean. And I thought for the most part, while he could get trapped at times in the interior, he did play with a real ability where in traffic, he would just kind of find a way to just 
get to the quarterback because he usually could keep himself clean and he just kept battling. They were very active hands. I like here is that he's able to maintain speed while working his hands off the edge. I loved that aspect. Some variety in his pass rush moves. He and his hands could create a lot more force because he can get offensive linemen off balance and then string it together. So you'd see on some of the like inside his, his inside counter pass rush moves where he'd utilize kind of the first hand to get that shoulder punch that was very effective and create movement and then work his swim to get kind of an inside counter as well. Even with some of the lack of like short area flexion, I did feel like there was real instances where when he would recognize I want to go inside here where he could really get proper, you know, depth to when to plant and break back inside. Like how far do I need to be from this tackle for me to actually get to where I want to be in the spot? And again, kind of tying his hands with that. He battles second effort to just find a way to disengage. You love that. He has a two-handed punch that you'll see at the top of the rush. And this as well, get it off his tackle off balance. Utilize that two-hand punch and keep working the edge. Because again, he's not going to consistently just run by and off his tackle, sink, and then dip right underneath. He doesn't carry that flexibility. So for him, he has to use his hands where even if he has a step, he'll kind of have to sink back, use his hands to pop, separate, and then finish onto the quarterback. That way he can really kind of close the path. And I think for the Lions, they would actually be okay with this because, again, they don't seem to love guys that just win around the outside, that are just trying to turn the corner. They want guys that are going to collapse the pocket. And I do think for him, he shows inside counter, he shows the ability to collapse the pocket, he shows the hands. It's just getting a little bit stronger, but then maybe also trying to unlock a little bit of that hip flexion into speed to power transition because I just didn't see enough of that. And you see, like, it feels like his hips, there's adequate ability there to open up. Maybe getting a little bit closer to the line will help him, but he's also going to get contact a lot sooner. He's going to handle that early contact, I think, really well, and that's what's going to help him and save him early. And then that could also kind of shorten his path to the quarterback to win the edge. But if he can unlock a little bit more of that speed to power, I think he'd be in a really strong spot. His hand usage becomes effective and he can create a jolt is that he squares himself in the contact. You'll see this as a pass rusher and as a run defender. And then you get to kind of the shed aspect. And this is where you'll see contact balance. And you'll really see this on like split zones. His ability to just not go on the ground. I think some of this comes back to that foot quickness. He plays with pretty good balance in his spot. Again, I thought contact balance could slow him down as a pass rusher. But in terms of this run defender, he really was rarely knocked on the ground. I think the flexibility hurts him here is trying to be able to work over blocks. So say he's on the outside, running back goes the opposite way and he's got contact and he's trying to utilize his flexibility to get back and work back over the top of the block. I think that's where some of the flexibility could show up as an issue. A twitchy short area foot quickness does show up and you'll see this is kind of slither that he plays with. Again, I think this could help a lot playing like a sandbacker role because he can just sidestep tight end, sidestep offensive linemen especially with a little bit more space. If he's in space, he has that ability to kind of quickly like right on instant, boom, sidestep. Just kind of juke out those guys at the second level and we see guys do that. Adrian Cooper did that really well. He had a lot of slither because of that like short area, bam, just like one step slide over. Um, even though I didn't think he won as much as pass rush, he had that ability in his foot quickness. I think this player can carry some of that as well where like they get up to him and he can kind of sidestep. A little bit slow to disengage from the tack from tackles consistently, but he does reset his foot feet after footwork and that can help him get free, especially if he's able to kind of stay on the front side. And again, he does play with real balance and ready hands. Now that agility, while you see some of the short area foot quickness, the real issue that I had here was dialing down after working upfield, right? It was being able to slam on the brakes instantly. It felt like it was a little bit choppy, but it was also mainly the stop start. It was more so the stop start. It wasn't as decisive or sudden. I thought it got a little bit choppy in some of those spots. Again, it could be a little bit straight up, which isn't as much on the agility side, but he does have that downhill step over ability. You see that with his feet that opens up the inside counters. Even though he's not creating a ton of inside depth, he has the good timing with it and he could really sell up field because with such quickness. He also carries the agility to kind of slightly adjust angles as he's working as a pass rusher. So whether this was inside or outside, you know, he could press up field and then kind of take the stab towards the tackle, or he could try to press up field on a tackle and then start to kind of weave his pass rush arc a little bit wider. Like he had that ability to kind of rotate his pass rush arc to keep himself with space from the tackle, but also then kind of open up, like, do I want to counter? Do I want to get to the top stop and then try to work back to the quarterback? Like he had that vision where he didn't constantly run out of the pocket. It's just that he didn't always have the flexion to plant down and get back, but like he could get to the top and say, okay, it's not there let me stop and let me get back you would see not only the vision but also that that just pure ability to kind of change angles and adjust his angles throughout the pass rush again being able to dial down from strides was tough that's what made him difficult he also had real lateral twitch in his game as well that really pulls me to flexion like I talked about where I think it's below average but he does have to me I thought he had adequate hip looseness. So I think there could be a little bit more that he's able to open up, especially if he can get a little bit stronger, maybe create a little bit of back bend into speed to power. You just didn't see that utilized enough. Maybe he could open that up a little bit. The dip to close is 
just stiff at the top of the rush. And the inside counter, again, it's not as elusive and it doesn't create as much depth as you would like, but it's there. He does carry lean in this rush, which can open up half man opportunities. Closing burst is very good in a straight line. He played with really big time effort, which is why he said that the Lions liked him, which you can easily see. And like I said, some of that T-step flexion was also very visible, but he finds the ball, plays with really strong vision, and he gets legitimate closing effort, whether that's the pass rusher or just working back into the play as a run defender. Now, I didn't think he was a great tackler, and I think that's one of those like little things that could end up being a big issue. I want to keep an eye on that. How good of a tackler actually is he? Because he was one of these guys that didn't feel like he was breaking down that well, and also he wasn't really showing a lot of stopping power at, uh, uh, at the point of attack. Like There was real leakage that was giving up, giving up on contact. So, again, I think that might suit him again a little bit better than not be like a pure defensive end, but that is something I'm keeping my eye on because especially in space, like that, he has the ability to move. He can change directions. He has that foot quickness that you'd want from a guy like this that's dropping within five yards. But as a tackler, I really want to see where that's at. To me, one of the biggest upsides was the coverage upside that I think is there. That's quick reaction. Receivers pressing a field. It's the short area movements when he's stepping over the slot. It's also his ability to quickly gain depth, you know, carrying a seam up the field for a few yards, quickly being able to get those spots. And then he's a finisher. He's that kind of guy that on the sideline he's going to drive you out of bounds. He's going to stick with the route. I just don't know how much playmaking is really going to be there at the catch point. That feels like it may be lacking. He'll probably be more of a positional coverage player than actually a playmaker at the catch point. And then from a football intelligence side, fast awareness, as I talked about, he plays with really good vision, uh, running back and quarterback. You also saw special teams value as well, which is really where the first step showed up. This block point, I mean, he just launched off the line. You put him by the center, and he's just launching off the line. It's like, you can't handle that guy. So again, if he's going to make the team, probably most likely would start with this. That's an area where it's like, hey, be impactful on special teams, and we might be able to have something here. I also like how he didn't jump off sides very often. Even if he misinterpreted when the snap was coming and he would anticipate wrong, he didn't typically jump off sides. Even when other players would, he wouldn't really jump off sides, which I did like. Again, I think he'd be a little bit faster at times at processing the offensive line scheme and being able to get a little bit more so ahead of it, and also just not pulling himself out of the pass rush by just pushing a little bit too steep. Those were a couple little things there. But overall, for me, this is a guy that, you know, again, lacks some explosion, lacks some uh, flexibility, and run defense is going to be a little bit of a question to finding that role. But he carries the foot quickness, he carries the agility, he carries the football intelligence to be able to bring you enough, I think, on early downs and play in different spots. So some of that backside quickness as well when he's playing some of that contain, contain role, though he needs to close faster and not give up so much airspace. And also sometimes, again, kind of reading who has the ball, that can be a little bit hit and miss. But because of that flexibility... Tied with the fact that he can definitely get off the line of scrimmage and there's upside as a pass rusher because there's a pass rushing traits here. Plus, he has the hand usage and he's he's done it. Like, this guy is not a rookie, right? This guy has, he knows how he wins right now. So he has that. If you could unlock a little bit more, maybe there's even more there. But I, I'm really curious to see what it could look like in, in, in a league where he can get a little bit more contact a little bit quicker because I think his hand usage would thrive in those spots. To me, though, I'd like him a little bit wider. I think that's an awesome opportunity to compete with Derek Barnes, compete with James Houston. Maybe less so for that early down role but compete for it because I think Derek Barnes is going to be that guy but rotational pass rush rotational pass rush and special teams and if we need you hey maybe you're the backup that can step on the line and handle run responsibilities handle pass rush it's taken a long time for guys to pick that up but this guy has football intelligence and you can see that by just where he aligns if he can pick that up quickly, I think he's going to give himself a shot. And I think with the type of agility and coverage skills, like this is the type of piece that on third down, you could just put him over a center because I'd love to see him closer to the line to see what kind of threat he could put on into your offensive lineman immediately. The lateral twitch and shiftiness is incredible. So he'd put a lot of stress on offensive linemen. And even here, you see the vision, but you also see that core strength. You see the ability to press up field quickly, but slam on the brakes and then just kind of work through multiple blocks with ready hands. So you give that aspect with also the threat that, hey, you can drop back into coverage. You may be able to minimize even some of the flexion concerns and just leave it to man he's just super shifty uses his hands well has some core strength there's enough hip flexion there this guy can win and he can close and he can find the ball like that's where it feels like he could be big time on third down and i'm telling you i would not overlook this guy biggest strengths of aiden hutchinson being the foot quickness and also the hand usage we put him on the interior on pass downs often that's kind of where i think maybe you could line these guys right next to each other let james houston play his role on the edge and go win the edge right that's still a different skill set pascal those guys have different skill sets but this guy brings the foot twitch and the in interior wins that you could put him on the inside he could just be a menace for slower interior offensive linemen so overall Matthew Betts 
I, I'm really intrigued here. I'm with Lions, I think they, they may have found something with this player. And as he said, back with the Bears when he didn't make the team, there's probably not an area which I don't think that I'm better now than I was then. And it would make sense because I do think that he wins a lot right now too with the savviness. He, he wins with technique, and that's big. That's going to be big because the Lions aren't looking, I don't think, here for a, you know, what can this guy be in four years? They're saying, if you're going to make a team, you're going to make it now. What can you do right now? And it's like, hey, if you have that ability to go win as a pass rusher, you have the technique to do it, you could make this roster. And I think that he does. So he's going to have a puncher's chance. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.